Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Save SA Live live stream. Tonight we are talking about a few things. Um, firstly, I'd like to uh, just say uh, we need to uh, support our featured producer of your 1660 campaign, David um, and Nadia. Um, like I said this morning, David and Nadia is a husband and wife team, and um, their uh, wines um, are fantastic. And um, I, you know, they uh, are producing wines um, that are that are really unique. So, before I say more, just go to davidnadia.com and go have a look. Go have a look at what this um, husband and wife team has achieved, and please support our producers in our sixty and sixty campaign. Um, we need to use the hashtags hashtag sixteen sixty. Hashtag Save SA Wine and Hashtag Drink South African. Um, and then um, I want to talk about something completely different. Um, we need to kickstart summer. We're sitting in the winelands in one of the most beautiful places in the world. And um, we're having a problem in that we still don't have the ability to attract tourists from overseas. So what we need to do in the winelands is really um, look towards local tourism and how we can actually kickstart our tourism summer because um, it's right on our doorstep. Um, as we all know, it's been a tough time in the last few months and um, all of us had to adjust not only um, to a new way of doing things, but some businesses have been and are still in a fight for survival. We've all seen the statistics from WinPro that paints a bleak picture, um, 18,000 potential job losses in the next year and a half. Um, the Winelands has lost 2.5 million rand in revenue um, in the in, in, between March and June. So it's, it's not a pretty picture. And um, we've all been working to promote the Winelands. We ourselves have been working on a few projects to promote our Winelands, including launching our podcast about the Winelands. We launched this in February. Uh, we launched this uh, Save SA Wine group on Facebook. Uh, we're collaborating on this 1660 project, as we just said. Uh, by the way, talking about the 1660 project, go visit our featured producer of the day, davidnadia.com, um, and uh, have a look at their story and what they're achieving. Uh, we've uh, also collaborated on the Cap to Seek pr promotion, and um, I interviewed six of your top Classic producers, those podcasts are all on our website. Interesting story. And, um, you know, we need to still keep on helping our, our users of Cap, um, our producers of Cap Classic. We make fantastic bubbly in South Africa. So we need to, you know, um, support them. Uh, but like I said, we've now completed more than 60 interviews with wineries, um, not only wineries, also other wineries businesses. And um, our podcasts are published on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, um, Instagram TV, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, and Spotify. Um, and as part of our podcasting program, we've also created more than 60 short explainer videos on businesses and activities in the Winelands. Um, our collaborative networks are now reaching more than 250,000 people and more every week. And we are currently doing two promotional live streams daily, um, 8.30 um, in the mornings and uh, 7 o'clock on weekdays um, in the evenings, um, although well, tonight is a bit later. And on week on, on the weekends, we're doing 9 in the mornings and 7 o'clock on weekends. Um, and this is all to promote the winelands. Um, like I said, with summer season on your doorstep, it's more than port important than ever for winelands businesses um, you need to step up your promotional activities now. This is the time. And uh, we are inviting everyone to contact us with any new ideas or anything they want to collaborate with. Just uh, contact us on visitthewinelands at gmail.com. And um, a great way, uh, you know, for you to get ex more exposure for your winelands business, your restaurant, your accommodation, your winelands experience, is just to use one of your premium service offerings. Um, we also realize that times are tough 
and we are here to give a helping hand and this we have decided to give away uh, 500 rand credit to anyone that um, responds to this um, as a gift to kickstart your promotion for summer um, and you can just claim your 500 rand credit by emailing us at visitthewinelands at gmail.com tell us about your winelands business and um, it's in a first come first serve basis and we'll send you a 500 rand gift voucher to use in your uh, digital marketing store um, where you can um, then use that on some of your premium services to promote your wine and business. Um, talking about promoting wine and businesses, as we all know, we're busy with the 60 in 60 campaign. Um, it's a campaign in collaboration with Erica Taylor. Um, please, our website is savesawine.co.za. Please go to the website. Go look at the producer calendar at savesawine.co.za forward slash 60 in 60. Um, you'll see which producers are featured next. And um, it'll be great if you could just, um, you know, uh, support all your producers and um, go to Instagram, leave a comment, instagram.com forward slash savesawine.co.za. And then... Um, our featured podcast. I was just talking about podcasts for this evening. Um, I'm talking to, I'm interviewing Pardon Taguza. He's the co-founder and owner um, and managing director of um, African Wines in the Netherlands, a nice big importer of South African wines. Um, and um, But before I go to the podcast, I just want to remind you again that a great way for you to get exposure for your restaurant, your accommodation, your wine experience, or your wine business, is to use one of your premium service offerings. Um, and we are giving away a 500 rand credit to anybody, um, any wine business that just emails us. Just email us and we'll send you a 500 rand credit. It's visitthewinelands at gmail.com. There is limited availability, so claim your credit right now. Email visitthewinelands at gmail.com and we'll send you a 500 rand credit that you can use in our online shop. Um, back to our guest on your podcast, uh, Pardon Taguza um, is based in the Netherlands. They import um, extraordinary South African wines and also they support wineries that have a strong social commitment. So you can, with them, you can enjoy your wine in the Netherlands and um, you can enjoy giving back. So without wasting any further time, let me introduce Pardon and um, enjoy the live stream, uh, the podcast. Welcome to About the Winelands. In this show, we will be chatting to influencers and leaders in the wine industry, winemakers, restaurants, and other businesses. Tune in every Wednesday and Friday for our latest episodes. You will find us on YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcast and Apple Podcast. Be sure to subscribe so that you do not miss out. Now to get on with the show. Good day, everyone. Welcome back to About the Winelands. Today I'm I'm talking to um, Pardon Taguzu from African Wines. Good day, Pardon. Good day, Will. How are you? I'm great. Um, you are currently sitting in um, The Hague in the Netherlands, also under a lockdown, and um, must be uh, quite uh, exciting times over there, if you can put it that way. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's uh, exciting, excitingly devastating times um, uh, in terms of business-wise and also yeah. uh, social life as well. Uh, because, yeah, we've uh, also gone under um, uh, social dis uh, distancing. Uh, not not really locked down per se. Um, the Netherlands has a different uh, different approach to, to this whole uh, pandemic. So we mainly doing social distancing, but we've also closed uh, uh, most businesses that has quite a, uh, quite a huge number of gatherings. Uh, uh, ATC, restaurants, uh, hotels, uh, events, and also the conferences as well that have been have been cancelled and uh, business has been on standstill. Oh, amazing! So, 
pardon, um, let's start off with something um, more, uh, you know, up, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became involved with the wine industry. Um, yeah, how I became involved with the wine industry, yeah, it's uh, quite a very interesting story. Um, well, I, I'm Zimbabwean originally, and um, uh, just like any other young, uh, uh, young, uh, young Zimbabwean, um, during the time when uh, when things were not going really well, the economy was actually taking a, a huge knock in, uh, in Zimbabwe. Uh, decided to uh, to visit the Cape, where my sister was actually based. Um, yeah, and uh, when I got to the Cape, it was actually in 2010, um, and I. I happened to I happened to uh, just work uh, at a hotel as a runner, um, and uh, then um, uh, then after that I got uh, the excitement. But uh, my my visa to stay at that time was just a visitor's visa, which uh, which lasted me for only about a month. Um, and after that I had to go back. Uh, I had to go back home. Um, so when I got when I got back home, I started uh, thinking about uh, this short experience which I had uh, obviously coming from a uh, from, um, from a background that uh, I'm quite very active in social scenes I like to socialize with people and uh, that that uh, small duration of time when I was actually working at the Royal Hotel for uh, for those uh, three weeks uh, gave me gave me a different perception to the world uh, that uh, I can still engage in people doing what I like to do and still in uh, and money out of it. So then uh, I came back to to South Africa uh, officially now uh, on a on a working visa, uh, and uh, fortunate enough, I got uh, I got a job again at the same hotel, which is Royal Hotel in Ruby Castell. Um, and I was actually a runner. They got me in uh, as a runner, but you know, um, coming from an uh, academic uh, academic background, you always want more, and you always want to achieve more. You know, so for me, being a runner was like, okay, yeah, okay, it's the beginning. So, what's next? Um, but I actually rose quickly uh, through through the system there. I was understanding uh, the systems how it works. I was also understanding as well uh, uh, how to talk with guests, and I was also quite friendly to to people. And uh, uh, I was also earning quite a quite a lot of uh, tips for someone who was actually just uh, arrived. Uh, so then I was offered the uh, a waiter's job. Uh, then I started picking up tables. Um, after picking up tables, I also was switched from uh, picking up tables and I went behind the bar as well. Um, I went behind the bar and um, got a little bit of fun insight about the drinks, um, which I, which when I got to the hotel, I didn't have any any idea about uh, alcoholic drinks because uh, I was coming from a uh, from a Christian family. Uh, which uh, which means that uh, drinking alcohol was actually uh, not was actually prohibited. You could not uh, you could not uh, drink uh, drink any alcohol beverages or even uh, even smoke. Um, yeah, but uh, but then I had the experience of actually working uh, in the bar and also uh, waitering uh, waitering uh, tables as well, and uh, I got the fascination of. Uh, uh, hearing people actually explain wine because the guys that I've been working with, uh, they have been at the hotel for uh, minimum almost like seven years, uh, and they could understand uh, wines and they could talk about wines. And I just got the fascination. And uh, with my academic background, I always want to know and uh, want to learn, uh, learn more. Um, so I asked the guys, okay, so. How do I get into into knowing about all these flavors that you're talking about uh, about this wine? Um, and you know, just just as uh, uh, as colleagues and 
with also the appreciation which I was getting uh, back then from uh, the guests and also from uh, from the hotel owners as well. Um, you know, my my colleagues were not uh, that willing to give away the information that uh, uh, where could I actually go and study and to and do uh, and do the studies and actually become uh, like them or even more. Uh, but eventually, you know, thanks to Google, <laughs> I actually uh, looked it up and uh, enrolled myself in Cape Horn Academy. And uh, I I remember in that time I used to travel with the train from uh, Ruby Castillo to Stellenbosch. Um, I'd drop off at Clapmart and I would walk from uh, Clapmart uh, down to uh, close to the mall zone there. And that's where the classes were being, uh, were being done. And then after that, I would do the same routine again. Wow. Um, yeah, so, and then, uh, yeah, when I did my introductory certificate, and then after that, I went to, uh, to, do, uh, to do my, my, my certificate level two as well, and then I proceeded uh, also. Um, then I met um, Kathy Maston. Uh, Kathy Maston who, uh, is actually doing uh, the WCT, running the WCT program in South Africa. Um, and uh, she introduced me to WCT. Then I was like, okay, wow, this is uh, something interesting because, of course, I I was thinking of um, not just uh, not just uh, South Africa as the place for me to explore one business. Uh, I was actually thinking globally. And when she pitched the idea to me that okay, you know, um, WCT is actually being recognized in uh, over sixty countries. Uh, 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 in the world, then that actually struck me by by uh, I actually grew grew an interest, and uh, then I also involved with the uh, uh, with the WCT as well. Um, then I did my I did my my courses at, until level three, um, and then um, whilst I was doing this, I was still actually working uh, in Rivika still. Uh, where I just also moved from the hotel, and then I went to uh, a very nice, cozy Italian restaurant and a restaurant restaurant in the valley, which is called Mama Cucina. Um, then I started off there um, building my first wine list. Um, I started off um, a wine program there, uh, and I also started off some food and wine pairings as well for uh, for that restaurant. Uh, thankfully to Kuni and Yohan, they actually trusted me uh, at that time to to actually take care of that uh, of that part. Um, but yeah, and I was never meant to 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 stay at one place, uh, which uh, which also um, my bosses then uh, Kuni and Yohan were very very uh, uh, they were very uh, open about me that. You know, if uh, we know you actually are pursuing a career in wine, if you have anything opening, please do take it. We don't want to hold you. Uh, we don't want to hold you to the same position. If you want to grow, you have to grow. So yeah, fortunate enough, um, I also uh, got a uh, got an offer uh, from our origin restaurant, uh, which is in Epita, where I then uh, started working there as an assistant sommelier. Um, and also I was now exposed to more, uh, to more wines, uh, uh, we used to run a, a wine, a wine list, we shared about 650 listings on the, uh, on the list and, uh, mm -hmm. we had a very huge seller, uh, of about 17,500 bottles, which is probably the best, uh, the best seller in, uh, in, uh, uh, in the Western Cape. Um, yeah, and um, uh, then I also started uh, competing as well. Uh, I was uh, the runner-up of 2017 uh, Best Young Sommelier in South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. And then after that, uh, and then after that, uh, we also went to participate in the World Blind Testing Championship as a team of four Zimbabwean uh, sommeliers. Yes, yes. Um, I, I, saw so, yeah. I saw the Zim sommeliers. Tell us a bit more about them. Yeah, well, so um, there, is, uh, there is a competition which is being run uh, uh, by Jean-Pinson Ridon. 
which is the South African Wine Testing Championship. So, so basically, uh, basically you you go from uh, uh, from regionals and then you also go to the, the nationals as well. Uh, but the rules of the of the competition is uh, any 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 of the team can only bring one foreign national into into their team. So when I participated in in 2017, I was actually in top five best uh, testers in the Western Cape, um, and um, uh, it also happens that we also have enough uh, enough Zimbabweans as well that were in the top 15. So ideally, it was very wise for us to actually create a Zimbabwean team and uh, just represent Zimbabwean team rather than. Uh, all of us just fighting for one spot in to getting into Team South Africa. So we did that, and uh, we we actually uh, went on the journey uh, to uh, to France, and we competed, uh, which uh, was the first time, and uh, uh, we we did not we did not have enough enough preparation. Uh, we came twenty three out of twenty four. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's, uh, that's that's basically about Zim Swamps, and it's actually a team which is made of four uh, sommeliers. Um, An awesome At that time, I was still working. Yeah, yeah, it is uh, it is a, an awesome story of wine bringing uh, uh, people from uh, different walks of life together. Well, also from a country like Zimbabwe, which doesn't really have a wine history. Yeah, yeah, we, we we basically do not have a vast uh, wine uh, wine history, but we have um, uh, we have up to now I uh, think about four wineries in, uh, in Zimbabwe that uh, not not really uh, that successful in actually making uh, making wines and also export uh, exporting wines as well. So basically, I can say the wine culture is not there. Um, you know, me for for instance. Um, I never grew up uh, knowing that okay we're gonna have dinner and then we're gonna have a bottle of wine at the table. Even though I was I was young at that time and and my folks um, also did not have that uh, that kind of culture as well, uh, let alone beer. So it is it is quite a unique uh, unique uh, uh, unique uh, turn and uh, and shift. Okay, so you you were then at Aubergine restaurant. So um, how did you get involved with? Uh... Um, you know, how did, how did you progress from there and, and tell us the story about African wines and, um, you know, how that happened? Yeah, well, uh, uh, well, African wines was actually, uh, it was actually an idea which was, uh, uh, which was birthed, uh, it was like two and a half years, uh, two and a half years ago. Um, I was still, I was still working at uh, Origin Restaurant and, uh, I met uh, I met this couple uh, that came into the restaurant with uh, uh, with their two uh, two sons. Um, it was actually uh, most arguably the uh, the fastest uh, table I had to serve. Uh, you know, uh, you know when you go out as a family, you you really want to relax. You want to enjoy your meal, and uh, you want to make the most time of it, especially when you're on holiday. So I. Uh, this uh, this couple came in and uh, they were actually uh, sitting uh, sitting upstairs, and uh, I was called by one one waiter that uh, they needed uh, so many assistance. So I went there and uh, I greeted them, and uh, they they told me that uh, you know what we uh, would like to have a nice uh, a nice bottle of um, uh, red wine from South Africa, and. Uh, they were all having a, a spring bowl. And um, at that time, uh, I was actually thinking, okay, uh, this is actually a traveling uh, family. Uh, obviously, they're not, uh, they're not uh, here to, to blow the budget. They want something which is, uh, which is quite comfortable with the budget, but also delivers as well with, uh, with their meal. Um, so then I actually also I recommended them uh, uh, a can service uh, Red blend, uh, um, which they liked uh, very, very much, and uh, after that, um, I was actually in conversation with uh, with the other son, and he was trying to offer me the job in the 
front of my in front of my chef, um, and uh, which was quite uh, quite a very uh, very very interesting uh, because there was like okay come on man you cannot be you cannot be saying such things in front of my my boss. <laughs> Um, but then uh, we kept contact, um, and uh, this uh, this family is uh, is actually uh, based uh, here in the Netherlands, and uh, they own uh, a few uh, a few restaurants, and they've been in the in the restaurant business for, for quite a while, and um, um, so we, we we kept on uh, talking and talking, and uh, prior to prior to that, when we were about to go. Uh, to go for the for the Grand Tourism Championship, uh, which Janssen Robinson had uh, helped us to actually do a crowdfunding. Uh, they were also the major uh, the major donors of the of the crowdfunding for us to to go to France. Um, so yeah, and uh, they also extended uh, uh, a trip visit as well from France to uh, to the Netherlands. Uh, that's when we sat down and we started. Uh, uh, we started talking. Uh, what could be best? What could we do together? Uh, what projects should we should we do? Uh, and uh, at that time, I always had I had thought about uh, South African wines being uh, making really a good mark into the into the world of wines. And I always had uh, had thought that they are not well represented uh, because. Uh, the, the entry level you get uh, in Europe, uh, either from a supermarket, it either gives you a good impression or it gives you a bad impression. And you don't have also other different wines which are coming from uh, very small independent producers, which are also focusing on a bit more quality than, than quantity. Uh, it's either you were getting a very entry level wine or you get a premium wine, which is super expensive. So yeah, so then I pitched the idea that okay, you know, what I would like to do is uh, uh, is to actually move into distribution, um, distribution of wine. So um, yeah, just like that, and then uh, we we actually started uh, started off uh, uh, started off uh, African wines. Uh, where I had to I had to bring uh, to build up a portfolio uh, of wineries uh, from Africa. Cape, but uh, literally from very small independent producers and uh, from uh, producers that are also uh, involved in social responsibility of their communities as well and also uh, giving back to, to the community and also aware of uh, uh, of the dangers of, uh, uh, of what, what the world and the plants are in as well. And uh, yeah, and that um, that just uh, happened, and we commenced our business then three years uh, three years ago. Oh, that's amazing! Just a quick interruption, but I do need to remind you that we are currently in a very difficult time. The South African government has set up a fund where businesses and individuals can donate to support our country through this crisis. Go to the website now and add your small donation, www.solidarityfund.co.za. Please join us all in the fight against COVID-19. That is at www.solidarityfund.co.za. Now, let's get on with the show. So, um, are you guys um, only selling in the Netherlands? Um, no, um, you know, it's, you know, uh, thanks to the EU, uh, you know, you have quite a very good, uh, free movement. Uh, currently we are selling in, um, uh, uh, in Belgium, we are selling in, uh, Austria, uh, we also selling in, uh, in London as well, uh, a little bit of, uh, that. Um, and we also selling now in South America as well. And we also uh, selling in, uh, in Germany as well. Oh, that's amazing. So, Pauline, I see that you've, I've noticed that you import from all over South Africa. Um, how do you choose your wine? I mean, building a portfolio is from, from all over South Africa is quite a, quite a job. Yeah, it's, um, it's quite a job, man. Um, <laughs> um, so, 
so basically, uh, like like I told you, um, the, the fundamental principles of building this portfolio, uh, which um, which my my business partner uh, also was uh, was very keen uh, in uh, keen in that uh, Belinda Belinda and Damiano di Alba uh, was mainly given back to 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 the community, and which is uh, what is also lacking. Um, uh, in the in the wine business uh, here in, in Europe, uh, so basically we wanted to gather around wineries that uh, uh, that do social responsibilities, uh, wines that are being made from uh, from, uh, from from the, from the from the wineries that are disadvantaged because they do not probably have the, the budgets to bring out their wines out, um, and wineries that also have uh, really good wine uh, that also counts but also really good story as well because uh, everyone now is moving away from from the norm of uh, talking about the, the the political jargon of the acidity you know the tannins you know uh, people want to hear what's what's going to make them feel good if they purchase this bottle mm. of wine uh, what is it um, are going to change in someone's life if, if they uh, purchase that bottle of wine. So that was like the fundamental principles where uh, where we were building uh, the portfolio from. Well, that's amazing. I saw it on your on your website there is a, a charity button, and um, you know that explains a bit more about it. So I, I assume that all your all your um, uh, wineries that you are are, are representing have some kind of a, a social responsibility type of angle. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, definitely, I can uh, I can run you through just just one example. Um, that would be great. Uh, yeah. We, yeah, we have um, we have on the portfolio uh, the one which is called uh, uh, Black Elephant Vineyards. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, based in uh, in Franchu. Um, and this is actually the coming together of uh, uh, coming together of three partners, uh, which is uh, Raymond Love, Kevin Swartz, and uh, and also Jacques Benson. Um So basically, what what this this whole cooperation is part of the BEE, which is the Black Empowerment Policy, uh, which also the government is uh, is also supporting. Um, and uh, this uh, winery, what they do, they have what is called um, the miracle, the miracle uh, dream, uh, where they actually uh, teach a kid in in the French Valley how to preserve water. Uh, you know, due to the drought in uh, uh, in Captain, which hit us, uh, which hit us a couple of years ago. Um, so they actually teach them to recycle water, you know, say for instance, the water that you actually use for your, for your dishes, you don't have to throw it away, you can actually uh, use it for, for your garden. Um, and, you know, it's quite fundamental because uh, that's how you can actually change things when you, when you actually uh, teach the, the kids because they will feel actually the responsibility to actually take up, uh, uh, take up, uh, take up such projects. Uh, and um, uh, they 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 do this uh, this project, which uh, you know some of their wines, some of their wines which they have in their range. Uh, when they are purchased, they actually channel uh, channel uh, channel funds to to uh, sustaining that project. So that's quite quite a very uh, quite a very interesting uh, interesting point and uh, interesting charity that we we actually run with. Uh, uh, they actually run. Uh, Oh, awesome. So if, if any of our listeners out there is a wine producer and would be interested to work with you, um, what do they need to do? And um, you know, do you have any other specific requirements? Well, uh, not really uh, specific, <laughs> specific than, uh, than either the, the fundamentals, which, uh, which, uh, which I have been, uh, um, uh, which I have been, uh, which I've just uh, alluded to. Uh, besides that as well, the wine has to be good, man. Uh, we here also to to make sure that um, our customers here have the best wine mm -hmm. uh, at the best value, and uh, it's not necessarily that uh, they have to to get a mortgage to to actually buy a bottle of wine. Uh, 
uh, they need to appreciate more South African wine. So we need to have all different categories and price point for them to start uh, to start the culture of uh, thinking of South Africa as a first choice when they get to a, uh, to a wine store or a supermarket in the, in the evening. Well, that's awesome. Pardon, um, now we're sitting with a situation with the coronavirus and um, you know, it's forcing everyone to rethink their business model. Um, do you have any changes or new ideas in mind? Um, yeah, you know, it's, um, you know, we, we actually now getting, you know, this is now the point where uh, personal, I think we've been, uh, we are being socially uh, prepared um, because of this, uh, this pandemic. Um, you know, this is when you actually need innovation. Um, so selling more online is actually the only the only thing that will actually make businesses survive at, uh, at this moment. Um, and uh, besides that, because uh, you know, uh, from, from my point of view, we have like ninety nine percent of our business, which is actually stuck up in restaurants. Um, but now this is where we have to, inno uh, to be innovative, uh, start selling more online, start doing deliveries, and also start doing uh, uh, a lot more promotions online as well uh, to just keep the, the audience, uh, keep the audience knowing about the brand and also knowing where they can buy the wines and what best value they can actually get from uh, uh, from uh, from such uh, uh, from uh, from such initiatives. Okay, excellent. So, part in your wine journey has been quite, quite an interesting story. What is the most important thing that you've learned from your wine journey? Yeah, well, the, the most important thing that I've uh, learned from, from my my journey is uh, is, to, is to have uh, a thick skin and stay <laughs> humble, have a thick skin, and um, yeah, just uh, just most of the times listen to yourselves uh, listen to yourself and um, you know just just uh, throw yourself out there uh, work hard the bigger the risk uh, the bigger the reward if you never try you never know awesome so my last question for you is um, can you give us your very own wine quote Oh, oh, your uh, I think you saw it in my. <laughs> I think you saw it in my email. Uh, the one I sent you. Uh, um, in wine, there is truth. In wine, in wine because I believe. Yes. Yeah, in wine there is truth because I I believe wine is a reflection of um, uh, of, uh, uh, of a religion. It's a reflection of a culture. It's a reflection of uh, uh, who we are as human beings. It's art. Um, so there is always the truth in wine. Awesome. God, thank you so much for talking to us. Um, if people want to get hold of you guys or want to know where you are, how do they do that? Um, we are available on, um, uh, on uh, mostly social uh, platform mediums. We are available on uh, Instagram. Uh, it's African Wines NL. And uh, our email address as well is info at uh, africanwines.nl. Uh, besides, uh, they can get to me directly as well at pardon at africanwines.nl. We also on LinkedIn as well as African Wines, and we also on Facebook as uh, African Wines as well. Well, that's awesome. We'll be putting your uh, links all in um, the description um, anyway, so people can find it there. Well, and thank you very much for your time and good luck with everything. Thank you very much, Will, for having me and uh, good luck for everything to do too and uh, stay safe. Thank you for supporting our show. If you would like to get more exposure for your business, please have a look at our sponsorship options. Thanks again for supporting About the Winelands. Please follow us on YouTube and on our social media channels. All details and links are in the description. Thank you.